Okay, so in a normal semester, I would be introducing some alternative lighting setups, uh, actually using some like area lights, spotlights, as opposed to just a big physical sky. Um, a little uh, with a different assignment. We usually do the uh, finger puppet assignment, but because we're in the middle of crazy COVID semester, I'm gonna um, we're kind of shortening some of these uh, projects. I'm going to introduce some lighting setups for the uh, the ball bounce up assignment. So I've um, been working on my little example scene that I've been using in all the tutorials, and I've added my little cameras so I can tell a story. And I've used the camera sequencer, and now I have the little uh, Uber camera working, right? So, um, you know, for the most part, I always suggest uh, students keep the cameras pretty straightforward and simple. Um, uh, clean framing and, and uh, usually not animating. I decided to just do a little bit of um, a little bit of a flourish with the camera. Originally I had it set down below, um, <coughs> uh, but I thought it was just a better where you could end up seeing the ball on the top. Um, so I just lifted and rotated the camera uh, through all that. Uh, so anyways, I end up with, uh, let's, maybe let's take a little sh shot here. We'll just do that one. Oh, so this is, uh, let's tell it to be Uber camera. There we go. So uh, I've modified my sky just a little bit. Um, I've also kind of tweaked the render settings and the cameras so I get a little depth of field. You do not have to do that. Um, in fact, you don't have to do anything other than just use the default lighting. The core of this class is, is animation, right? Um, but I always introduce uh, a few things um, to kind of augment uh, what we've been doing in class. Um, so um, <coughs> in a minute, I'm gonna basically uh, turn off the, the dome light and I'm gonna deal with lighting a totally different way or uh, maybe I'll do a little blend. Um, the one thing though, uh, based on the setup from this, I noticed um, it's one of these little things I've always just mentioned in class. Uh, the default for the sky dome um, is set uh, with lower number of samples. So I don't know if this is coming through in the screen capture, but it's a little grainy on the ball here. It's a little grainy on the pillar. Um, uh, I could click the little camera to keep a little snapshot so maybe we'd see the difference. And I'm gonna uh, click on the, the dome and if I hit uh, Control A, I bring up its attributes. Uh, for the sky dome shape, you can see right here there's samples. So the samples are just the number of rays or samples that come from these various points in the sky. And because this is set at the default of one, which is a little bit low, a lot of times it can work, sometimes it does not. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, now don't put this to 10, right? I would try two and I'm gonna reload this and let it render. Because these samples can add up, uh, making it, you know, for a slightly slower render. And two should be enough. If you had a more complicated scene um, with more things to bounce on, that you might want uh, more. I'm going to save each one of those, and if I click on them, maybe in the, the screen capture you can see grainy, much better. Grainy, much better. So samples, it's a little bit tricky because you have to figure out like where the samples need to come from sometimes. Uh, it allows you to optimize your renders, but um, it can also lead to a little confusion. So uh, the moral of this beginning tutorial story is um, if you're just gonna leave the sky dome up um, and use it and not have to worry about any lights, of which I'm about to show you, then that's totally fine. Completely acceptable, won't have any impact on your grade. But for those that want to experiment with lights, I'm gonna move on to the next little part. So just remember if you are leaving the sky dome in there, turn the samples to two. Not the volume samples, but just the samples right there. And uh, as always, you can, um, so if I go back to the sky dome and I click on the color, it will bring up the, um, the physical sky attributes. So I can change, you know, how high it is in the sky. Oops, let's get out of there, right? So I can put the, the light there if I want for whatever reason, right? Um, in fact, what if I put it? So really what I'm doing is just rotating around the scene, right? I think I had to set somewhere around 12. I could also just 
put this down really low so there's hardly any light. Oops, let's do 0 0.05. It's pretty low. Look at that. So ultimate dusky kind of thing. All right, obviously it'd be easy enough to just turn this off, but let's just pretend this is a setup where it's just going down 0 0.025. That might be about as low as it's going to get. I don't know if it's going to change, right? So sunset for uh, um, for us. So the next thing we're going to do is add a light. And let me get on my Uber camera. Let's just deal with the perspective. OK, <clears throat> so light. Oops, let's uh, turn on my little magic mouse preferences for 3D navigation. There we go. <clears throat> OK. So if I go to the Arnold tab, um, and there's several places you get lights, you could use the Maya built-in lights and then use its uh, Arnold features in there. But I'm just gonna use the Arnold tab. This is where we would get the physical sky right there. Um, we can also create an area light. And an area light is just the idea that the um, light itself, even a light bulb comes from an area, right? There's a little filament in there. So it's not a singular point in space. Uh, a singularity, right, of light. Though that's used to be the way uh, old lights were calculated. It's, it's not uh, realistic, I guess. Um, so we're gonna add a light to this. So just come up and click area light and you'll see it's added to the scene. And I'll just move it up here. And you can see it just comes in like a square, right? And it has the little, uh, I don't know, a line coming out of its center. And that just tells you which way it's pointing. So I'm gonna rotate this, uh, just put it right there. <clears throat> right, there's lots of different ways. In fact, maybe what I would want to do, um, well, I'll just leave it right there. Okay. And we'll look at attributes as we're going along here. Maybe I could just hopefully the dead docs in there, nice and easy. Okay, so uh, it has a color, intensity, and exposure. And I'm going to come up here and just say perspective so I can get a sense of what's going on. So I've added the uh, light to the scene. It doesn't really seem to have done anything, right? Um, the uh, intensity is a linear uh, intensity, right? One, two, three, four, five. Um, the exposure is uh, exponential, it's a doubling, and it works more the way uh, cameras and light is calculated kind of in the real world. So um, this is one of those where you could start with one, I don't see anything, and I start, I go to 10. Look at that thing is just on fire, right? Um, so the thing, the reason I like exposure is that you, if I leave that off, if I do 10, for the intensity, you can see 10 of intensity was not a lot, right? I can go up to 100, that's still not as bright. So 1,000 is pretty close to that, right? So I always use exposure because it's smaller numbers. You can use whatever one you want, right? And just kind of dial that in interactively. Um, uh, one thing that we can see in this render, and I mean, it gives you kind of a rough thing uh, where it looks very grainy, but as it resolves, it, get better, it gets better. But the, the shadow here, if I were to zoom in on this, um, the shadows themselves can get grainy, and those come from, just as we did with the sun, it comes from the samples here on the light. The number of samples needed kind of depends on how big the light is. Right? So if it's a big, large area, the shadow itself is going to be very soft, right? Because it's coming from this large panel. Right, so I've created this big, like, studio light. It's like a matrix world, right? We just have these big light panels. So you can choose to add lights to the scene um, that way. And if you want to, um, I can also here and just shrink that down. So you can see as it gets smaller, just the way, because the rays are coming from a small area as opposed to coming from all over the place, it helps to find a crisper shadow, right? It depends on whatever you want. That there's no uh, 
technically right way to do this. There's lots of schools of thought about, you know, how to approach rendering dramatically and thematically, whatever. So I'm just going to use something kind of middle of the road. Um, and uh, the other thing too is you can you can play with the color. I stay away from this because then it ends up getting kind of disco, neon kind of feel to it. I would end up using uh, temperature, right? So uh, basically this is the real, uh, the temperature, 6500, you might be like, well, what's that? This is the Kelvin scale. It's an absolute temperature. You can look it up if you want. Basically it's gonna range from um, like 4,000 it's going to be kind of a warm, like tungsten light. Maybe even a little lower would be 2,500, more like a fire, right? Uh, 6,500, pretty close to white. Uh, Skylight, I think 8,200, right? So you get a little bit of blue in there. So don't think of light as color. Think of it as temperature, right? Do you want it a little warm? Do you want it a little bit cool? Um, that's how I would play with that. So for now, I'm just going to use uh, 4,200. Right? You don't have to use any, you just move the dial till you get a color, um, a temperature in there that you really like, right? I'll just soften that a little bit. Just a little bit of a warm light is kind of nice. All right, uh, the, the other thing is we should talk about the spread, right? So the spread basically is how spotlight do you want this to be? I actually do something that's a little spotlight because when my ball rolls in, I want it to be uh, kind of from the darkness and kind of make its way into like this stage. Um, and you can play with the roundness uh, of that. In essence, you can make it a, a square if you want and how, how much of a soft edge there is around the, the spotlight. You can uh, mess with those if you want. I'm gonna leave that as two. <clears throat> All right, so I have a light in there. Um, it's like a little stage light, and if I go to the Uber camera, right, so I still get this nice little color like the sunset, but now I'm on a stage, right? I've got this dramatic little light that's in there, and we can add multiple lights as we go on to um, dress up the scene, right, if we want to make something that's a little more dramatic one way or the other. So I might do that in the second tutorial. The first, and you can add as many lights as you want. Don't add, and don't add like 25, but two, three, five, you know, lights in here in a little scene if you want to, that's fine. Um, you know, and you can play with color and, and any of that stuff, so. All right, so that's almost 13 minutes. I'm gonna call that good. So remember, using the skylight, for sure turn the samples to two, and the samples on your area lights, this is gonna depend on the samples are going to be related to the shadows. So if you make this really big and you want really soft shadows, then you'll probably have to turn your samples up to maybe three, four at the absolute most. All right, we'll call that good.